Hi, this is Jared from sysmincomputing.com here to give you another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to show you how to um, first of all verify the sender of an email where it actually came from, uh, identify key points that might uh, indicate it's a false or phishing email, and finally how to uh, check an email attachment or any file for that matter to verify it's safe to open and it's uh, not containing any viruses. Uh, for this tutorial I'll be using Thunderbird. Uh, the same techniques can be used by any email client. Um, you can do this with Outlook or any other email. Uh, some key points to start with. Uh, before you do this usually in your email settings you will want to make sure your message body is set to plain text uh, that will protect you from things that are possibly embedded into an email via HTML or JavaScript that could also be used to uh, harm your system it's just an extra little precaution that you can take and it doesn't cost you anything um, Finally, you may want to do this tutorial when it comes to downloading uh, an email attachment that may be dangerous in something like a virtual machine or a uh, live CD such as an Ubuntu live CD or uh, some other Linux distro. And that will help protect your system in case you accidentally do execute the program. It will either not execute under, uh, under Linux because most viruses are written for Windows platforms. Um, or if it does manage to execute and infect the system you're not out anything because it's only infecting the live environment that uh, disappears at restart. Uh, now that having been said let's take a look at this email. I actually have two emails up they're both very similar uh, supposedly from the FedEx post office and these are actually phishing emails. Uh, in particular they're designed to deliver a virus uh, stored in this attachment here but let's talk a little bit about uh, some things that you can look at uh, and some tricks that uh, fishers use to actually uh, convince you to click on their virus program. Uh, we have allegedly an email that comes from the post office. The uh, from address looks like a valid from address from FedEx. Um, we have uh, an email basically saying that they have a package for me but they couldn't deliver it for whatever reason and uh, you need to come and pick it up but here's some key points that they give you here they they do things uh, like providing a, a location nearby uh, they give you a parcel ID number although if you actually plug that number into FedEx's uh, parcel tracking software it uh, has no idea what this package is. But some key points to look at. First of all, I wasn't expecting a package, so that should be your first very immediate red flag. Um, I'm not expecting any packages through FedEx. So that should put up an immediate warning in your mind. Second of all, you'll notice that the greeting is not to you specifically, it's a more of a generic uh, form letter. Most services will at least put your name or email address in it saying hey this is for you uh, we have a package for this individual or whatever now that having been said uh, FedEx I've never known FedEx to actually email you nor the post office saying that they have a package for you all they usually have is your address and if you're gonna get something from them it will usually be delivered on like a sticker on your door or a slip of paper in your mailbox so that should be another red flag um, let's take a look though at some of the techniques they use to try to get you to click on this uh, attachment because their goal is to get you to click without thinking we as human beings like to click on stuff to begin with and so they try to use techniques to get you to further act on that impulse we have here uh, saying oh well you have to print off the attachment uh, it's a uh, supposedly a uh, a label so that you can get your package and then they provide some urgency they say attention 
If you haven't picked up this package within 30 working days, our company will have the right to claim compensation from you. And uh, with its keeping to the amount of, and then they'll give some dollar amount for each day of keeping. And they try to do this to give you some urgency uh, because they say, oh, you're going to lose all this money. Now, again, FedEx or the post office or any of these types of companies are never going to charge you for packages that they're having to hold. Uh, if anything, they're just going to throw it out <laughs> if you haven't picked it up. So that should be another huge red flag. All of these things should tell us, okay, this is a scam. We should not act on this. And you can, at this point, just say, okay, well, well. But let's say you want to be sure. Uh, you're really worried about this. Uh, first thing you can do, of course, is call up FedEx and say, hey, I got this email. Is this legit? And they'll most likely say, no, it's not. Don't worry. But let's show you some of the uh, more advanced uh, things that you can do also. Uh, first of all, uh, I believe in Outlook, you can actually have it show you just the headers. In Thunderbird, you have to ask for the message source. Either way, we're interested in this part right here. And this is called the message header. You'll see below, here's the rest of the text, and there's actually the email attachment in an octet stream form. Uh, but this is what we're really interested in. Now that does not look like a valid um, email address from FedEx. Most likely this would say, you know, some sort of FedEx server, FedEx.com, you know, mx.fedex.com or something like that. And, uh, you know, this would usually be the same email as what we were seeing in the from. Now, something a lot of people don't know is you can actually send an email, if you know what you're doing, um, and have it say it's from whoever you want. You could have it say it's from the President of the United States, and it will show up in the from with the correct address for that person. But really, this is something that you can't uh, spoof. This is the actual server where it came from. Um, now, let's take a look at this I'm going to use a tool. We're going to highlight and copy this text. And I'm going to use a tool by IP address with only one D uh, dot com called trace email. And you just paste the source right in. You don't have to worry about grabbing only the header, but all they really need is the header. And say trace email sender. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us where this server is that we were looking at. This uh, Digital search light cypress.net server is. And oh, look, it's in the Netherlands. That should be an indication that this is also not a real email because FedEx is most likely to have a US based mail server, especially for sending to US uh, citizens. So that should also tip us off. Uh, another thing you can always do is what's called a Whois lookup. This will tell you the information that's registered with the domain. You can either grab the IP address that we got in the last search, or that's listed um, here, or you can just copy this uh, domain information and paste that in and say, okay, IP Whois lookup. And we have here, it tells us a little more information about this domain. It's uh, registered uh, through a, it looks like a reseller, wildwestdomains.com. Again, indicating further this isn't a valid email. Uh, there's some contact information. If we wanted to contact them and say, hey, you have a compromised mail server or whatever. Um, and some more information about them. And again, this nice little tool, also by ipaddress.com, shows you uh, a little map and everything. Uh, you don't have to use ipaddress.com to do a Whois lookup. There's lots of free Whois lookups out there. Um, but since we were already on this, and it's a nice little tool that shows you uh, email information and, and such, uh, I showed you with that. Now, let's get to the attachment. Here's another, let me close that source, another little red flag. This is a zip file. Again, most likely if they were to send you a label like they're saying, it's probably going to be a PDF or a picture of some kind. Though that should also not be um, considered safe per se. Um, you can and 
exploits have been embedded in PDF documents and and uh, Word documents and other such uh, things. So we're going to take a look though at this. I've already downloaded this file and saved it without opening it. You don't want to open it if you're going to check uh, to see if it's a virus. Um, I did a save as and saved it and actually changed the name on it, uh, the extension, just to make sure I didn't accidentally um, open it as a, uh, as a zip file and infect myself. But this is a, a website called VirusTotal, uh, VirusTotal.com. Great website for verifying if something is a virus. Um, it will actually scan it with, I believe, 42 different antivirus scanners and return a report. In this case, I've already scanned this file once, so it's saying, hey, you can either reanalyze it or view the last analysis. We'll view the last analysis because there isn't really any reason to scan it again unless you don't have any uh, identifications of it being uh, a virus, then you might want to. Uh, but we have here 32 of the 42 antivirus scanners have identified this as a malicious piece of code. And in particular, you'll start to see as you're looking through this, it's a Trojan, uh, a uh, virus that uh, masquerades as a legitimate program. Um, and uh, in particular, this one's the fake AV type of a virus. Uh, it pretends to be an antivirus, pops up, says, oh, you have 5 million infections, many of which it's downloaded itself and uh, you need to pay us tons and tons of money to, for a subscription to clean your computer. They're a really big pain to get off, really annoying. Um, and so we definitely do not want to open this file. So in recap, we've talked about how you can identify if an email is legitimate, if it's a phishing email or not. We've talked about some of the techniques that um, email um, scammers use to infect your computer. We've talked about uh, how to identify where an email came from and information about the server that sent it. And we've talked about how to scan an attachment uh, for potentially malicious code. Um, again, this is Jared. Come check us out at sysmincomputing.com uh, for further tutorials and news articles and such about security and general computing practices. I hope this has been helpful and informative and I look to hear back from you soon.